Right, welcome back to another episode of Pro Shop, where I, as an average golfer, am scouring the marketplace to look for, well, either bargains that are out there for you that you've perhaps not come across just as yet. We've maybe got some new product that, again, you've not seen as yet. And also, we've got a couple of nuggets that sit at the top end in terms of price-wise. But again, I really like to make sure my audience are all well informed of what's going on in the marketplace right now. Of course, this is in association with our partner hot golf and all the items that you see on the table right now and what we're going to discuss in this episode are available from them and they're the prices that i will quote when i let you know just how much these things are i always like to start with the one that sort of Perhaps the star performer in terms of the price category list, although we have got a couple uh, that arguably could take that crown. It's at the front of the table. It is a wedge from Wilson. It's Wilson Harmonized Wedge lineup. They're available in 52, 56 and 60, so minimal in terms of your options, but the price point is really, really significant here. These things are, and I always like to check, 34.99, thought that was right, so 35 pound, right? That's a rock bottom price. Are you getting rock bottom performance? Absolutely not. We've, there's a couple of things I wanna talk about. Let's talk about the aesthetics first of all. A Wilson product is always a classy looking piece of kit. So first of all, it's fairly stripped back, it's chrome, it's classic in its looks, there's some great cambering on the sole. From a shelf appeal perspective, having this sat in my bag, I'm happy with that all day long. When we've tested some of the cheaper wedges, the one thing I would say they perhaps fall down on is just their sound and feel. And again, something that you know I'm willing to make that compromise. You're always thinking, okay, so if I'm gonna save some money, I'm clearly gonna have to make some compromises. Well, I think this is where Wilson do particularly well. The sound and feel out of this thing when I took it on the course was a real shock. The other thing was the consistency of the performance and the control and the spin. I'd say it was on the softer side in terms of the feel. And again, that for me is something that I really like. I love to use a, um, a forge wedge and this isn't a forge wedge, but it's got some real good soft feel. And more importantly, something that resonates back in the hands and something that you can work with. So minimal in terms of, like I said, the options you've got in terms of the loft and the grinds, all them kind of things. They're the kind of compromises that you're making, but they really cover the main spectrum of lofts that you're going to need in your bag in most cases. And I think for a lot of golfers, that is a really good wedge to have in the bag, especially when you consider most of the brands recognize they or suggest that we should be changing our wedges every 12 months. Now in reality, and that's down to the wear and tear of the, the, the grooves. Now in reality, that's not something we can afford to do. Whereas if that was a rule that we were looking to follow, then something like this at 35 quid makes it a much more realistic option. So that's a good one. I'm gonna flip over to this shoe to the right of me because this is from Skechers. Um, it's an interesting product. First of all, they've introduced what they call twist fit. But this is a slip in shoe. So first of all, when I first seen this, it's fairly low around the ankle area. Looked a bit strange to me. However, my mind soon changed. You'll see a very much a padded area at the rear heel. And essentially you push down, slide your foot into these things as you would with a slip on, but it's obviously a very tight fit. And all of a sudden this thing is very snug, to be honest with you, even before you start to tighten the fastening system. They're waterproof. They've got three different colors in terms of the options. I think it's a really good shoe. And for me personally, from what I've seen from sketches so far, this is a real leap forward. In the design elements and the way they look, first of all, is a big deal for me. I like the fact that they've introduced um, the ratchet system, twist fit, whatever it is they're calling it. Um, but this idea of slipping these things on and off, and to be honest with you, particularly if you're of an older age, struggle with mobility, those kind of things, the idea to not have to get down and to be fastening your shoelaces right now, well, it might be something that's a real appeal. But the on and off system, very strange, very hard concept in many ways that how does that stick on your foot still and how is it such a secure and tight fit well i'm guessing it's a lot to do with this padding area around the back but all i can assure you is it works really well 
and they seem to be incredibly comfy. They're at $129.99, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it or not, they are waterproof. Right, go to the left, we've done everything from the right so far. Shot scope. Um, now we had a look at a watch, a perhaps in the last episode, which was the X5. It had a lot of uh, sort of tracking elements. That's a sort of thing that sat in at 250 quid. This is a new watch, the G5. Now the G5, quite simply, is a cheaper alternative with less going on in terms of performance than what the X5 did. That's the simplest explanation. The watch itself, when you unbox it, you're given uh, and there's, you're given two straps. Uh, in the in the watch that I've tested on course, then I had a white and grey strap. So if you've got like to co color coordinate your outfits and uh, or prefer one than the other, they're the options you're going to get. There are so many different color options to wear and to suit whatever your eye prefers, lots of options. But this comes in at $149.99. So again, a lot different price in the X5. It's very simple. You switch this damn thing on, it tells the time, you switch it on and you've got a lot of access to the sort of yardages that we would expect to find. The, it, to be honest with you, for me, the simple stuff, which is front, middle and back, I can also find uh, yardages to bunkers, yardages to, um, to dog legs and all those kind of things. But for me, in the main, when I'm using one of these devices, and I mentioned when we looked at the top end of the Garmin S70, the Garmin S70 is an amazing watch but it does far too much for me personally. That is more than adequate. I want front, middle and back. I want a watch that looks good on the wrist. It's extremely lightweight. I like the fact that you've got the options of these different colors and different straps. It's more appealing again uh, to be wearing. Never knew, noticed it on the wrist, which was something I used to have an issue with. Super lightweight and that kind of money makes sense. And to me, Obviously, unless you want that tracking element, this is a real good price point to be looking at for a decent watch from Shotscope. Right, where are we going to next? I'll have a glance down, I think. Um, should we go to the bag? Let's go to the open because obviously we've got, the open has just gone by. Um, I'm not sure what I thought of the open really. It was a bit of a procession in the end, wasn't it, for Brian Harmon and therefore we didn't get a great deal of excitement. But anyway, back to the bag. It's another tailor-made, limited edition. Very, very briefly, I mean, all I like to make you aware is these things are available, 499. Um, it's the one that you kind of, I would think, stick on the shelf, perhaps never sees the light of day, uh, if you like to collect those kind of things. And I've noticed, again, just being online this morning at Hot Golf, they've still got the Masters and that from the uh, US Open as well, still available to buy. Right. We've got two options here. What do you want? Do you want the, the real bargain? So we've got something that lines up exactly in the sort of category of the Wilson, or we go to this thing here. And as we're here, and the finger's there, that's where we're going. It's the Mizuno Pro 225, very, very simple. Blacked out, black shaft, black grip. Don't really need to say a great deal about them, do I? In the chrome finish, when they first came out, these things were stunning. Arguably, they're one step further in terms of that stunning category because that is just it's ridiculous isn't it it is such a good looking iron my only fear with these things is i'd just be i don't know whether it's a club that i would like to game i just don't know whether i'd be so fearful of spoiling them um but i don't know but and they're, they're hugely expensive it's an expensive set of irons anyway but the blacked out version is 1575 uh, and that's a four to pitching wedge so a lot of money a lot of club looks good do you really want to play them i'm not sure i would i think uh, i'd be a little bit scared but in that bag they just look amazing so we're going to finish off with we're going to go with that real bargain now we always have this debate on on in on the channel full stop about golf being affordable it's a real big deal and there's been a lot of criticism this year about the sort of 500 pound driver that's been the focus of attention from many comments when we did all the reviews mainly early part of the year huge amount of criticism that manufacturers have hiked the prices i get that so it's important that this episode for me exists and that's why we do it is to highlight that look we'll look at all the expensive stuff i get you know there's often criticism for that 
but I'll also want to bring you what is out there in terms of making the game more affordable and hence like I said we this idea of pro shop was born this club is a Callaway product is a set of irons it is the Maverick irons falls into the game improvement category all them things of strong loft was a hugely popular range for Callaway and I've mentioned this before hot golf do this particularly well in that they make available older models brand new I keep having to stress that point but this is the Maverick from late 2022 in terms of when it was first released and they've managed to get a whole load of stock in terms of these five to pitching wedge sets and the cost to you is 399 quid now I think that's you know that's why I love to see it. it's brand new product it's from a major brand you know it's going to perform well you can go back and watch reviews from me and from many other reviewers on YouTube and they've all been really really positive about the Callaway Maverick irons so you know you're getting a good product at a good price point I'm not really sure where you can go wrong in terms of if you're looking for a set of irons right now game improvement irons if you like the look of Maverick then you've got yourself a real good option there so well worth considering we've got I've just noticed I said we'll finish there we've got a set of the some um, really what I would call souvenirs still there's some Titleist Pro V1s there with open logo on and again ties in with the open bag um, probably publishes a couple of days later than we intended to they're 26.99 it's basically uh, essentially the same price as what you're paying for pro v1s but it's a limited edition for the open of this year if you want to stick something in as a souvenir i suppose or maybe buy an early christmas gift for somebody look that's me done i think it's uh i was gonna try and highlight for, for me the wedge probably is a standout product the one that surprised me more than anything if you're paying 35 quid for a wedge I'm not expecting a great deal. Um, that one surpassed expectations by a mile. Uh, I've already tested the Maverick. Shoe surprised me in terms of that fit system. Uh, what I would say with those is don't do what I did. I took a quick glance on them, liked the look of them, seeing this sort of low cut heel. The slip on idea didn't really appeal to me in any way until I dropped them on the floor and had a little go of them. And then I realized this is quite interesting. Um, fairly lazy myself and just to kick these things on and off was really cool twist and uh, away you go real secure fit uh, snug fit seems mega comfy in terms of a golf shoe so yeah don't dismiss them like I do so again we've bought and a, and a watch again that's brought in at a price point that can uh, appeal to more golfers than uh, maybe a Garmin S70 at uh, probably 500 pound more expensive so there you go that's it another episode of pro shop let me know if you want to see anything in particular if we're missing out stuff i'm doing my very best to find product uh scouring that hot golf website having a look at things that really catch my eye hot golf are providing me with those samples then to go out and test and give you some um give you my feedback and that's the way this is um panning out so far but if you want to see something different than we're not featuring then obviously let me know right as ever thanks for watching continue your support don't forget hop on over to the new channel which is testing the tips don't miss that one out it's flying right now and uh it's basically me testing out tips from fellow golf youtubers and uh, it's improving my game hopefully it improves yours as well so hop on over to there getting a bit greedy see you soon